I was raised in Spotsville, Kentucky. I went to Spotsville Elementary School. I was the only minority. Um, I was raised in, my mom was white. I had two brothers that was also white. I never, I never felt accepted. Um, kind of like the Cinderella story a little bit. Uh, that's how I felt. So at the age of 13, um, it was my birthday and I was able to, she, she's the first person that smoked weed with me and I was, I felt a little accepted then. So we moved to Evansville and it was totally different. It was totally different here. She couldn't support us so it was from house to house, from place to place, with either no electricity or no water, no food. Um, I remember my, me and my brothers like going to a store and shoplifting food. And then somewhere along 16, 17, I got introduced to pills and opiates became my downfall. Like it was every day, every day I either had some, I had to have some type of opiate. I was arrested 32 times, booked in the county jail. Um, by the grace of God, they didn't put me underneath that. Because as many times and in many felonies that I, that I caught from addiction, because uh, it was all drug related. Absolutely, almost everything that I've done was drug related. So I went and hooked up with some friends at a room and I ended up getting raped. And I, I expressed this so many times because it, I don't blame myself at all. I don't. Granted, he was an addict. I found that out in the long run. So it's like, ugh. But I know if I wasn't so worried about getting high that I wouldn't know my surroundings and I wouldn't have put myself in that situation. So, and I thought, I thought that would, you know, this, that's, that's pretty hitting the rock bottom right there. And it took every, like, I was walking dead. Like, it took every, I didn't have nothing left in me after that. I thought that, okay, that's my eye opener. It's time to stop. I was starting to see, like, people are seeing something me that I can't see, but it has to be there. And then I think about, how did I make it this long? Like, whenever D. Lewis came and interviewed me at the jail, and I was looking at D, and she was looking at me, and she was like, are you, so you're ready? And I was like, absolutely, I am. And then I came here, joined the YES program, that was one of the best things I could possibly do. So then I can start figuring out how to live because when you're out in the streets and like you forget the simple things, taking a bath, how to be a female, like you forget all that stuff. I remember I got, I got a job a week after I got here. I remember one day I tried to call in and she's like, ah, we're not doing that. You go to work if you're that sick then they'll send you home. And that taught me, like, I've been there almost five years and I don't call in. I got health insurance. Like, this is like stuff that I would never imagine. I have a car. I came back here and I, I volunteered myself every chance I got, every chance I got. And so I have a clean record and you have everything that you need right here is safe. You ha they're gonna give you the tools that you need. Whenever you get done with the program, they make sure that you have housing. Like, they do everything that they can for you to make you be successful. United Way, without funding for the YES program, there would be no YES program. And this, it saved my life. I mean, I can honestly say it saved my life. You asked me who I am today, and today I would have to say that I'm a much better version of Rachel. I am a survivor. I have hopes and I have dreams. 
Um, I'm a woman with expectations now. I am a recovering addict and alcoholic. I am a child of God and on top of that I am a daughter, I am a sister, I'm someone's co-worker, I'm someone's friend, and I'm somebody's fiance. I can say today that I love myself more than what I've ever loved myself.